question is directed to Jonathan Judge. Here is Shlomo Greenwald. What is your position on the lack of available housing in the district? And what specific steps would you take to address this problem? In your answer, please address the issues of affordable, the issue of affordable housing. Also, if you'd like, include the problem of the low number of public parks in the district. Well, uh, that these are these are two big issues that actually I can sympathize with tremendously. You know, for young professionals today, including uh, people like myself and a lot of people my age, uh, when our parents were our age, it was a lot easier to afford rent, have a normal job, be able to provide for yourself. It is getting incredibly difficult for people, even with two incomes in the same housing unit, to provide for uh, to provide for the cost of living. Now, a lot of it has to do with the fact that property taxes have gone up, which means rents have gone up, which means maintenance in co-ops have gone up, uh, which means fees in condos have gone up. We, we, first thing we have to address the fact that the, we need to return the $400 property tax rebate. It's taken away from us. And There's supposedly another property tax hike coming along the way. We need to make sure that, and I can guarantee you, I will vote against another property tax increase. All right, Jack, no taxes. All right. But there's also a longer term problem of any new units that are affordable. The city has a wonderful program, the city planning department, uh, and it's included in our zoning text. It's called inclusionary housing. It gives developers, and in this case I'm pro-developer only in the sense that I think that if a development can include a certain number of low to middle income housing units, then it's a worthwhile development for everybody in the community. And so uh, Borough Park, for instance, has not had a rezoning in a very long time. And what could be done, is, except for a certain uh, development projects, as uh, Mr. Lazar has mentioned, one that he was a part of. But uh, one of the things that we have to do is look for where we can rezone in our district, rezone in our community at large, to, to add this provision of inclusionary housing, which would give an incentive to a developer to build more, to provide for more affordable housing for the people of our community. That's a very important thing to keep the young talent that we have in our community living in Brooklyn, providing for the tax base of the city of New York, raising our children here, so this way our children can continue the great tradition of keeping our communities alive, and the traditional values that we value to here. And the way we keep that going is by making sure they can afford to continue to live here. Parks is a very important issue too. I'm just going to address that very quickly. Uh, one of the things that was a big disappointment growing up in this community, there were no parks to go to. You'd have to travel very far. Uh, the first thing that I would do as a councilman is look at available space where, granted we don't want to take large lots of way where we could possibly provide for more affordable housing, but at the same time, there are plenty of recreational opportunities to be for development uh, in smaller lots on new streets, and we could provide that. We have to do a survey of the resources available in our district, so I do believe that we need to increase funding for an important issue like that to provide for the youth of our community. Thank you very much. Joel Affordable housing is really a very, very difficult issue because there, it spans many, many different agencies, many different uh, problems that come up. We need to do a few things. Firstly, we need to cut the bureaucracy. We need to cut the red tape. I'm going to give you an example. We talked about that first project of affordable housing that we did here in Borough Park. SEPCO was trying to build a new development. They were trying to build affordable housing, 15 Heavy Gardens. They came to me because I was with the buildings department and the uh, buildings that they were trying to take down were vacant buildings, they were uh, real eye stores and they wanted to knock those buildings down and build affordable housing. They came to me because they were working for three or four years trying to get the buildings down. The city's definition of an unsafe building is open, vacant, and unguarded. There were drug dealers living in those buildings. They were not unguarded. They were not vacant. The city wouldn't allow them to uh, knock those buildings down. I had to work with the buildings department, with the police department, to get those buildings emptied of the drug uh, addicts and the drug dealers, and then they could knock the buildings down and build affordable housing. Affordable housing is something that requires getting all levels of government involved. You've got to get HPD together, you've got to get the State Department of Housing and Community Renewal involved in the funding, you've got to get uh, the U.S. Department of Heart of the Housing and Urban Development Administration. You've got to get everybody to work together on that issue, and you have to cut out the red tape to allow the building of the affordable housing. I want to help you that. All right. Yeah, there is
something I have said in my original speech. I will work on affordable housing with developers, city agencies, zoning commissions, and building departments to give incentives for developers to build affordable housing in, in the community at the same time while protecting the areas that have lower zoning. Because I know I would not want a big building right next to my house to also block my windows and doors. And I will create and I will work with developers to find an area that is best for everyone, to make housing affordable. And there's one thing that had a great effect on our community a couple of, years, a couple of months ago, and that is tax abatement. That means giving, giving your developers, developers build houses and pay tax based on the old worth of the house. That means a house is, if the, if the tax of a house is $1,500 a year, then, and you build a new building, your taxes will increase. But this tax abatement would reduce and keep for 15 years the same amount for uh, your new building that these developers built for 15 years. That means even with the new building, you will still be paying $1,500 for 15 years. And this will also create more jobs for our community. And you know, this is actually a question that's very personal to me because Mar I have a job, I make a decent living, and my wife and I still cannot afford to buy a house in this community for ourselves and our kids. I think that's why what we need to talk about is really specific solutions to address your question. And so, a couple of specific solutions. First of all, in the 60s, there are significant areas that are commercial, especially between 13th Avenue and 17th Avenue. I'd like to rezone these neighborhoods with a catch. So let's think about what's happening. Let's say you own a warehouse on 63rd Street. The property is worth around a million dollars. Now, by the simple fact that we've rezoned the neighborhood, your property is now worth $5 million. Well, pretty good deal. We should all go buy property on 63rd Street. But here's the catch. You're going to have to split the profits with the community. That's right. Of the $4 million that you make, $2 million will have to go back to the community in the form of setting aside middle-income housing once your warehouse becomes condos. That way, we're going to create more housing and affordable housing for people who live in the community. One other great point. There's a great piece of property right now on 19th Avenue touching a park that belongs to the city. Right now, the warehouse is garbage trucks. Folks, we can store garbage trucks anywhere in New York City. They don't have to be in Borough Park. I want the mayor and the city council to take that land from the city and build affordable apartments there instead. We can easily create hundreds of units of affordable housing there. And one final point, taxes. There's a very big problem that a lot of people have told me when I, when I knock on doors and I visit that, and that is that the city taxes condos at a much higher rate than they do houses. Specifically, one, two, and three family homes are taxed at 6% of assessed value. Condos and co-ops are taxed at 8% a year. That's 35% more than a house. What's more, when there's a new condo, their initial value is very high. Of course, these laws were passed when most of the condos were built in wealthy neighborhoods in Manhattan. The government has to recognize that we're living on 14th Avenue, not Madison Avenue. We need to change the way that condos are taxed and the way that they're going to value to make it more affordable so that once you buy a house, you can actually live there. Thank you. Thank you very much.